Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be looking at facial rigs. This is all part of a much bigger course, which you can find on gabbit.co.uk, about the very basics of animation. You can also find other free courses on there, and of course links to the Animation Challenge, which is an animation challenge for the month of May. So do join the challenge, and those that complete the challenge will be put forward towards the prizes. So facial animation. Now one thing that's really important for this is to have a good rig. And the rig I'm going to use is this one here, Cartoon Guy version 1 by M.G. Ward. This is a really fantastic rig generally, and it's got some facial rigging implemented also. So let's go across to Blender, and it's quite easy, you just download the Blend file, which I've got just here, and you can drag it into 2.8 and press Open. And it opens up, and the rig is all ready. If I zoom out a bit, you can see that the rig's already there, and we're actually in pose mode. I'll zoom into there again. I'll just start my shortcut keys, which will be down in the corner here. So what we've got, we've got a video sequence editor at the top here. That's important for bringing in our sound. I've got the timeline at the bottom and the action editor. I won't really talk about the action editor much. I'm just going to change this to the dope sheet because I don't want to really confuse things. But the action editor, you can actually store actions that you make in the dope sheet. One more thing that I think would be useful is to just bring out a screen across here as well. So I'll pull this across and zoom into this one here onto his face. And over here, I will zoom in to the controls. I'll press T and N to get rid of the toolbars because I don't think I'll need them. And in fact, I think it'll be even better if I pull out another screen so I can see him from the side view as well. So we can see him from about here. You can generally have a play with the rig. It's really good. As you can see, there's lots of cool functionality. And what I like as well is the finger controls. You just press scale to bend them. And that's a nice way of doing things. I might even use this rig for the animations rather than Mac for that reason. And nice foot controls and IK. All nice and simple as well. Excellent stuff. So I'll just select all and Alt-R and Alt-G to put them back. So Alt-R is clear rotations, Alt-G is clear movement. So even got this really weird one at the top for stretching out the head, which you always want to do. Not sure how that works with the other controls over here, so I probably won't be using that. I'm going to bring in my audio first and then go through the facial controls afterwards. And that's where we're going to use the video sequence editor at the top here. So let's bring in our sound, add, and then sound, or you can drag in your sound clip. So here's my sound clip and I can bring it in and there it is. In order to zoom into that sound clip, I hold control and, and drag my middle mouse button upwards. It's a little bit tricky to see at the moment, so I'm just gonna pull these down so I can zoom out a bit and see where it's gone. There it is, okay. <laughs> so let's zoom into that. And I want it fairly big because I want to be able to see the waveforms eventually. First of all, let's put it at the beginning. So we want zero, zero, and there's frame zero. And if it's over here or something, I can press Shift S to snap it to the playhead. Now down at the bottom here, we've got view, and we want to, and we want to show our waveform. So waveform displaying, waveforms on. And now we can see our waveforms. Now I can right click to move my playhead into position, press spacebar, and it's only playing the first bit. And that of course is where my timeline is set up. And it's only set up between frame one and 15. That's why it's quite handy to have the timeline open. So we've got one and 15 here. I can change this. So if I move my playhead into position, I'm at frame 35. So let's start at 35. And it finishes about there. So that's frame 76. So we'll finish at frame 76. Now when I press spacebar, Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. Hello and welcome we can to hear Gabbit Media. There's two more settings we need to sort out before we can move on. At the moment, when I drag across the timeline with right click, no sound comes out. So we need to click on this playback option, which is in the timeline, and we need to go to audio scrubbing and make sure that's ticked. And then where it says no sync, change that to AV sync. That will make sure that it is definitely synced. Now we're ready to play with our rig. We're already in pose mode. The menus are at the bottom, which is a bit annoying because we come from 2.79 and loaded a file in from 2.79. And usually in 2.8 now they're at the top. So pose mode down here. And I can click on these different things and G to grab and move them across. And there's lots of different options that you can play with. Some of them don't seem to do much like S and G and K. I'm not sure why that is. And that would have been kind of helpful, but maybe someone out there can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Sometimes as well that if you click on the armature, you can set up what are called pose libraries and you can create new libraries in here for different letters of the alphabet or different combinations of the letters of the alphabet that have the same facial features. That's a bit more complicated. I may go into that in other episodes, but for this tutorial, I'll just go through setting up the animation by copying keyframes from 
previous places. What we will need to do first though, before any animation, is to mark some points where our facial features are changing. So here, for example, is H huh for hello. If I press M for marker, and this is all in the video sequence editor, it does add markers down here on the dope sheet as well. I can also click on that marker and click and drag to move it if I need to. And I can press Control M to rename the marker. And I'm going to type in HE for H. Huh. If it was a HA, then it would be HA, which are different facial features. So I tend to type in the second letter as well, so it's clear. Let's scrub along a bit. The other point that's worth making is that I tend to go two frames across rather than having things one frame close to each other. That can be a bit jarring if there's any big changes. And generally mouths don't quite move like that. So the next one will be the low. And what you saw me doing there was I press spacebar and keep right clicking in the same position to make sure that I've got the low point, as in the right point in this case, which is low. So H and L are very similar facial positions. The only thing that would change is the tongue. This rig doesn't have any tongue controls, so there's actually no point in doing the L section. But there's kind of a keyframe point there because I want the H to stay the same from there to there. So I'm going to put a marker in there anyway. Let's just double check I've got the right point. So M for marker, control M, and then I can type in low. The next key point is going to be the W. And it's around here. I don't actually say W, but I have the W mouth position. The important thing to do as well is to actually say these things out loud in front of your computer so you can feel where your facial muscles and position is and you might want a mirror in front of you so you can see what you're doing. So M again, control M and W. When welcome to Gabit. When welcome to Gabit. So it's around here where the A is, so I can probably move this W across a bit so there's a smoother transition. So just one frame there. And then M, control M and so it's just a ah. It's not a ah, it's a ah. <laughs> So I'd put a double A if it was a ah sound, but it's just an and. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to go through and put markers down for each of these sections. So there we go, I've put all the markers in. And you can see, for the most part, this one's quite close together. But for the most part, they're reasonably spaced apart. And I've used naming conventions where it's clear the facial positioning. So let's start doing some keyframes. So let's go to the very first frame, press our record and I want to keyframe all of these things, select them all and press I, location. And that's keyframe them all. I also want my jawbone here, which hasn't got a control up here, but I want to be able to move that in the Z axis, G then Z. So I do want to keyframe that. And now I've just moved it, so I have keyframed it because I've pressed record. Otherwise you'll need to press I and then location for that as well. So there we go, I've got my base face shape and now you need a H. Huh. So let's go to the H. Huh by right clicking there. And I want to move my jaw down slightly, so G then Z. And that's about all I do for the H. Huh. So let's go across to the low. So H huh and L are almost the same, but for the tongue, and we can't animate it in this case, so I'm just going to copy that keyframe across. Shift D and bring it across. So the next one, OO or O, oh, this will be different. So we can come across to our controls and the pucker one's going to be important. So grab that and pull it across, hello. Hello, and does my jawbone move? Hello, just checking, hello. And I'm noticing it moves very slightly on the low. It goes really slightly wider. So I'm gonna grab that in the Z axis. Make sure I'm on my low actually, sorry about that. Grab that in the Z axis over low. And then it's kept the same position. So I need to copy the keyframe from here to here. So let's find the jaw keyframe. And it's right down at the bottom, Shift D, and duplicate. And what I'm noticing is, look, my jaw is open because I forgot to put a keyframe at the beginning there. So let's grab that and press Alt G to remove any movement. And this time it did keyframe. I thought I did that before, but I made a mistake. So already we can see this starting to work. I'm gonna go back to the top of my dope sheet. It can get a bit confusing in the dope sheet. If you want to remove some of that confusion, sometimes it's easier on each keyframe, rather than having record pressed, 
just selecting all with A and then pressing I to insert keyframe. That way you know you're going to select for each channel you're going to have a keyframe. But can you see on some of my channels I've got a keyframe on low and others I haven't. So the pucker slowly happens over time. And that's not actually what I wanted. So you can see the pucker scale here. So if I drag along, it slowly moves up to that point. And that doesn't really make sense because the H and the L don't have any pucker in them. So actually I need this Shift D to be copied to here so it doesn't pucker until that point. So that's what you have to be careful about when you've got record pressed and you're setting your keyframes naturally by recording and moving sliders around. Remember they'll only change from their last keyframe. They won't always be set. So if I'm moving across and moving different sliders one time and then moving across a bit, moving other sliders the other time, those first set of sliders won't be keyframed the second time through. Hopefully that makes sense and you have to put in your keyframes each time. Like I say, the easiest way to do this is to select all and the jawbone in this case and I to insert keyframe when you're happy. The only problem with that is it creates lots of keyframes so it can get a bit confusing. That's the only reason you wouldn't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to press I and select a keyframe in here for the location and you can see now it's on all the channels. So let's go back to the top and let's go to our W. So right click on our W, so that's a W. So hello. So the O slowly goes into the W. So actually, I think it's worth copying this keyframe, Shift D, hello, and it goes with my long hello that I tend to do at the beginning of my videos. There's a long bit of low. My jaw actually comes down then up at the end. I might bring this keyframe in a bit so it's not right next to each other. Remember I said about the two keyframes and how it's not always good to have them right next to each other. So I'm going to grab that and pull it across. And I want my jaw to come wider at this point. So G then Z on the jaw. And that's looking fine. And let's go to the ah sound. So the first thing to check is that have we got any keyframes before? Obviously, if I had a pose library, I could just put it in. But have I got any keyframes that are similar? So h huh and ah are slightly similar. So let's grab that one. But it is worth noting that I haven't got all the keyframes in there for every single position here. So what I can do is select all like I did earlier and the jawbone. Make sure they're all set by pressing I location. Now I'm going to copy that one across. Shift D to the A. Ah, and the A ah has a bit of a smile to it. So for me anyway, my corners of my mouth go upwards. So let's go to that and select our smile left and right together with shift and then grab them and pull them upwards. So there's a hello and next keyframe. Hello and welcome. So welcome is the same as this W here. So I can grab that one, Shift D, and pull it across. And any time you want to see your progress so far, you can change the endpoint, so 58 in this case, and press spacebar. Hello and hello and hello and hello and hello. And, hello. and that's not looking too bad. So I've gone through and I've added a few more keyframes under the different markers. Let's see what it looks like. Hello and welcome to Gamut Media. Hello and welcome to Gamut Media. Hello and welcome to Gamut Media. And that's fine. The next thing to do, of course, is to do some facial animation as well. So hello, I might have my eyebrows raised. So if I go to the beginning, click on my eyebrows and insert a keyframe for the location and then the O. So grab in the Z and maybe the middle two come up a bit more. And I've got record on, so that should record them. Hello and well. And then I have to put them back again. So let's select these, find them on our dope sheet, select the beginning ones and copy them across. Hello and welcome to. So you can easily put in different animations there. So hopefully that's given you an overview of facial rigs and how you can use them. There will be facial animations for the animation challenge. So do get across to the website, the Facebook page or the Discord server, join in the discussions and join in the challenge. If you have any thoughts or comments, then do comment below. And until next time, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.